Kathy, I want to give this to you real quick because I gave these out. I need one. Oh, I need one too. Thank you so much. Okay. These, these are the ones I gave out yesterday. I know, but I need another That's one. okay. Sure. All right, we're live. Thank you. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good, amen? Why don't we stand up on our feet? I know you guys just sat, but we can get back up and, uh, and we'll go before the Lord. Uh, I want to welcome everyone who's joining us live as we're streaming this. Uh, this is Faith and Healing Class. I'm Eddie Serino. I'm one of the pastors here at Abundant Grace Church. And uh, this is our Faith and Healing Class where... We feed our spirits, right? Our faith gets stronger, and we learn how to overcome, how to be victorious in the battle. So uh, expect today, release faith with me together as we go before the Lord that we're going to hear from God. Exactly, I mean, I know that the Holy Spirit knows exactly what we need to hear. Amen? So if we release faith, we'll get what we're supposed to today. Amen? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Your word is life. Your word is truth, Father. It, it, it's medicine to our mortal bodies, Father. The life of God inside of us creates, makes power available for us to be strengthened and to walk in the way that you would have us to walk. And so as we approach your word today, Father, we ask the Holy Ghost to teach us to lead, to guide, to instruct. We uh, release faith concerning uh, revelation knowledge, Father, uh, answers to questions that we may have. Father, I thank you for impartations of truth, that we know the truth, and the truth makes us free as we embrace it. And uh, may everything that we say bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, come on in. Praise the Lord. It's good to be together again. The Lord is good. Amen. He's faithful. He's faithful. And uh, the word works. The Lord has sustained us. The Lord has helped us in uh, enduring this time. We've been, uh, we've been kept and preserved. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. Lisa, if you want to grab one of these, these are, these are some, uh, the Ephesian prayers and declarations that we've been uh, doing in our classes, the Lord instructed me to, to kind of do these, and okay. we're seeing results. You're welcome. We're seeing results. Amen? Uh, so we're going to do that this morning. We're going to get into the Word, uh, and we're going to pray these uh, prayers like Paul did in Ephesians and then in Colossians, and uh, believe God for... Uh, for spiritual wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, amen, which is going to enable us and quicken us and strengthen us to, to walk the walk. And we're going to see through these scriptures that Paul said that it's the only way that I'm able to do it by spending time and being in the word, amen. So let's do these here. We'll start in Ephesians chapter 1, and I'm just going to read these out. And I have it, like I said, personalized in and uh, we are, we, we, and so as we do these, let's mix faith with it and believe God. So uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, starting, it says, I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. That's us. That's us. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength for me, a believer. You worked with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and gave him the honored position, the one next to you, the Father, on the heavenly throne. And Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and all other names that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him. You made him the head of everything for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16. Ephesians 3.16, it says, I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift 
from the wealth of your glory. How many want a gift from the wealth of his glory? He's given us the gift of eternal life. And we're going to be talking about that Zoe life again. We started yesterday, and I'm excited about it because there's a lot, a lot, a lot to it. Amen? But uh, we're asking you, God, to give us a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. And we discussed a lot about the importance of love, how love is the actual fuel that makes our faith active. It's important that we walk in love. This way, with all of God's people, I will be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I'm praying this so that I may be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you, whose power is at work in me. By your power, you can do infinitely more than I can ask or imagine. Glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. And the last one, Colossians chapter 1. And, you know, we're doing these together, but I would just encourage you throughout the day, before you go to bed at night, to... to Pray these prayers and expect what you're praying to come to pass in your life. God wants to impart things to us more than we even want them. He wants to impart them to us, and, and they're received by faith. But we know that our faith, the reason I was so, uh, and I spent so much time on it, and we're still not, you know, released from it, we're still hooked on it, is walking in love. Walking in love and the challenges of walking in love and how walking in love is a choice, you know, and, and it's something that we need to endeavor and choose to do every day. But uh, that's how we're going to receive from God. So Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, and this is the last one, says, For this reason... I have not stopped praying about this or thanking the Lord. And, and I explained yesterday, uh, we're not praying because we don't believe he heard us the first time. <laughs> this is a declaration. So we've prayed about it. We continue because it's important. And we thank him that he's hearing us when we do pray. So I ask you, God, to fill me with the knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. And how do we know his will? What is his will? His word is his will. So if we want the knowledge of his will, we need to have knowledge of his word. And if we leave our Bible sitting on a shelf or on the coffee table with dust this thick on it, and we're saying, Lord, I need knowledge of your will, <clears throat> we're wasting our time. He's going to say, open up the book. My word is my will. That's, what, that's our part. But you see responsibility. And, you know, let's face it. We don't want responsibility. It's just human nature. We want, we want the benefits of, of being responsible, but we don't want the work that goes with responsibility. You know. But the responsibility rests on us, and uh, far too many Christians, not, not us, because we're strong soldiers, faith fighters, right? But they want these, these principles and these promises to be working in their life, but, um, but they're not willing to be uh, committed to doing their part. And if we'll do our part, God is always willing and is doing his part. Amen? So uh, I ask you, God, to fill me with the knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves I belong to you. That's how people are going to know that we're related we're, we're his. He's our father. But we need, in order for that to happen, we need to be filled uh, with spiritual wisdom and insight. By this knowledge about you, uh, that th in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you, I ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure and overcome everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness, and you brought me into the kingdom of your Son, whom you love. Glory to God. That is good news, friends. We have been, we have been set free from the law of sin and death because the law of life in the Spirit in Christ Jesus 
has set us free from the law of sin and death. That's why it's impossible for a believer to be plagued with sickness if we walk according to the word. Doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that the enemy won't challenge you in those, but it's impossible for it to dictate our life. It's impossible. It's impossible. Virtually impossible. If we believe that according to Galatians 3:13 that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law, that the law of, of, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set us free from the law of sin and death, then what we need to be telling the devil, it's impossible for me to be sick. It's impossible because Jesus became sick. Jesus became cancer. Jesus became COVID. Jesus became depression. He became lack. He became hard of hearing, bad eyes, bad knees, backs, elbows, uh, Alzheimer's. He became all of that. And he became sin, which all of those things are a form of sin and destruction and death. That's what they work in our bodies. So it's impossible for us as a believer and now I, I keep forgetting that we have our own. I, I, not that I've forgotten, but I, I got to keep keep an eye contact with them too because I finally have people in front of me that I could see. Uh, I got so used to that, you know, I, I'm the transition here. But it's impossible, friends. Say that it's impossible. It's impossible for me to be sick. It's impossible for me. Let me say this. It's impossible for me to stay sick. It's impossible for me to stay sick. If you believe the word, and I believe the word, it's impossible for me to stay sick. Now, what is our part? Fighting the good fight of faith. Fighting the good fight of faith. Getting up and declaring these things and reminding the enemy that by his stripes, I was healed. Jesus took it in his body, carried it away from us to the cross and brought it to hell with him and paid for it. So it's impossible. I cannot stay sick. You may try to put a symptom on me. I may get a sniffle. I may even get a report. And I don't care about the report because I have a better report that says he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement for my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I was healed. If I was, then I am. That's a forever settled subject. God is always, that is ours. If we're not walking in that, friends, that's because we have positioned ourselves somewhere else. If we are not walking in that, and this doesn't come as condemnation, this comes as truth. We know the truth and the truth sets us free. We've all been guilty of yielding to thoughts. We've all been guilty of yielding to false reasonings. We've all been guilty of yielding to symptoms. Every one of us, if I could lay on the ground and put my arms and legs up, I would. But it doesn't nullify the fact that if we will stay positioned and on God's side with the word, we will walk in divine health. Impossible for us to stay sick. Impossible. Impossible. It's a matter of working the word. Well, how many times do we have to confess it? Until. Until. How, I mean, is it worth it to you? We know that winners never quit and quitters never win. We talked about previously uh, last week about digging deeper, going deeper, holding fast. You know, we get so close to the promise and then we yield to the lie. And we're like, oh, man. And we grow weary and we stop pursuing it. And that's why we never walk in the fullness of it. Not that, not that God decided to take it away. God never takes it away from us. You understand that? Even if you had healing and in, in manifestations in your body, and then all of a sudden you got symptoms again, know this, that God did not take it away from you. There's an enemy that wants to steal it from you. And if we keep the door open to him through strife, through disobedience, through yielding to thoughts that aren't right, we give it back. We turn it back over. But it's still there and available for us if we will position ourselves where we need to be. And we need to be on God's side. If his word says it, 
Brother Hagin said this all the time. If his word says it, I believe it, and that settles it. Done. It's a forever settled matter. And it's a fact that we've been healed. How many are saved in here? Can anyone ever convince you that you're not? How do you know? How do you know you're saved? Because you believe it in your heart. Right? And there's nothing, I don't, sometimes you might not feel saved. But does that mean you're not saved? Can anyone convince you that you're not? The same way you receive salvation, you receive healing. Same exact way. Healing is much easier. Think about it for a minute. The greatest miracle you're, you'll ever experience is receiving salvation, is having a spirit recreated, brand new. Healing is simple work for God. It is. It's, it's mending the body. He designed our bodies to begin to heal anyway. I mean, you ever have a cut and people say, oh, I don't believe in healing. Well, then keep ripping the scab off your cut. And don't get better. Don't get better. Just keep tearing that thing off, you know. Healing is part of our covenant. It is our right. Prosperity is part of our covenant. We have the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 has set us free from the law of sin and death. We were condemned to death. We had a sentence imposed upon us. Nothing that we could have done about it. We could give every amount of money that we have to orphanages, to children and cancer hospitals, and all these good things. But we could never buy ourselves salvation. Jesus came because he loved us. Because he loved his father, and he had to bridge that gap of sin, which was the condemnation that was against us. That sentence that said, yeah, you will be in bondage, you will be sick, and rightfully so, legally, you turned it, the devil had every right, you turned it over to me. And there's people who serve him, and, they had that, that, and, and, and it's the enemy's right to destroy their life. But it's not his right to, to, to work in a believer's life. Do, do, you, do you understand that? If he's working in our life, causing destruction, he's doing it illegally. Illegally. And now I know none of us would let somebody do something to us that's illegal. We wouldn't let someone just come into our house and take all our stuff. We never would. But yet the devil does it in a cunning, deceiving way. And only way he can do it is if we give him the access. Yes. Sure. Yeah. You know what? I believed it. Yeah. I yeah. believed that. Mm -hmm. Until I heard somebody say that one day, never. And I, it was like I got it in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Never, ever do that. Never. That's not God. Nope. But it's, I believe that for a long Yes, and, it, and, if, and if we'll believe that, it keeps the door open for the devil to ransack your life. Yes. It does. God, don't never mess with your head. Ever. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. If it's coming to your mind, God doesn't speak to our minds. We don't contact God through our mind. Now, this is a this is a this is a, a, a fundamental truth that we need to get a hold of. And, and sometimes when we hear it like that, yes, or do are we conscious of our in our mind that we're yes, but we contact God communicates to us through our spirit. That's why the scripture says in, in Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if you believe with your heart, not believe in your mind, because we don't contact God with our mind. We contact him with our spirit, our heart, the real us. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, you are saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made. We speak because we believe inside. And when we get the revelation, and, I, and we're, we've been building upon it, that, that eternal life, when you're born again and you've received Jesus, just like you're saved with eternal life is eternal health, 
is prosperity, is a brand new creature in Christ. Brand new. Zoe life. That's what we've been talking about. Zoe life. And we're going to talk about that today. So open, uh, if you have your Bible, to John chapter 4 in verse 14. Glory to God. It's healing is a forever settled fact. Now, do we have our part to play and fight? Yes. Yes, we do. And are some uh, battles harder than others? Yes, they are. And that, that, that's, that's truth. But we are guaranteed victory if we will hold fast to our confession of faith. Hold fast to our confession. Now, why, how do we speak a confession of faith? Why are we speaking and decreeing things? It's a, exactly. But what enables us to decree these things and say it's impossible for me to be sick? Because we believe it in our heart. We believe it in our heart. From the abundance of the heart, the Bible says, the mouth speaks. So whatever's coming out of your mouth is an indicator of what's inside. Now, we can, we can adjust. And if we're not happy with what we're saying, then adjust what you're hearing. You understand that? Because what you're hearing is what's producing inside of you, and it's coming out of our mouth. You get around people who don't know these principles, and all you hear about is how sick they are. And I feel this, and I feel this, and I feel this, and look at this, and I feel this, and I don't understand this, and I'm concerned about this. Nothing faith in any of that. And I don't, I don't put my, point my finger at people like that, but it irritates me after a while, because I want to say, listen, it's this way because you're speaking these things into existence. Change what you're looking at. Change what you're hearing. And you'll get a different result. And you know it. You know it by what you hear people saying. You know people who are walking by faith and staying with the word by what's coming out of their mouth. That's why we said yesterday that even a fool is considered smart when they keep their mouth shut. Yes. So, so it's better off just to say nothing. If you can't say, say nothing. Don't give life to the words that you're speaking. Faith is in our heart. Again, faith comes to us by hearing and hearing the anointed word of Christ. What we're doing today is we're feeding our spirits. So we're, we're, we're planning living word into our heart into our spirit and so when a challenge comes the word is what's going to come out of our mouth and when spoken in faith because we believe it it accomplishes what it's sent forth to do Amen. every time it doesn't matter the, the the enormity of the situation you know we want to categorize things and yes some some things in the natural seem much more uh you know being diagnosed with cancer or sore throat or certainly there's an enormity to those however however uh, cancer is just as easy as a sore throat for god that that's been paid for that's been paid for so it's impossible for me to stay sick I decree and declare that my body is getting healthier and stronger every single day. Every single day. Do, do we get up and we don't feel that way? So what? Do we get up and we see something different? So what? Does that change God's word? Yeah. Friends, this is where the rubber meets the road. Right. And I'm not saying something that I haven't lived or, or put to practice in my own life. If we want to see... The, the manifestation of his word coming to pass in our life, we have got to get up and do what the word says. And the only way you're going to get up and do what the word says is all those prayers that we just prayed. In Ephesians, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, spending time getting to know his will, giving yourself to the things of God, following hard after God. We have an enemy that wants to rob us of every blessing that God has provided for us. And he can only do it through illegal deception. Do you understand that? He cannot just come and ransack your life. He could bring symptoms. He could bring mirage. He could bring thoughts, feelings, emotions to you to get you to yield to them. If you just look away from them and look into the word, he cannot gain access. He cannot gain access. 
Do you believe that this morning? Yeah. Do you believe it? Yeah. Because it's truth. It's truth. Knowing the truth makes us free. Makes us free. So we have, because we're born again, we started talking about this. And I'll tell you what, I could talk about this till the Lord comes back because there's so much to it. There's so much to it, and the more we, the more we uh, unpeel some layers, the more layers we find. And it's the revelation knowledge of God becomes imparted to us. And God begins to show us even more things and more truth and revelation. And that, that revelation is life to us. You know, whether it's talking about holding fast and digging deeper, whether it's making sure that we're walking in love so that our faith works. These are all principles. But what we're talking about now is uh, Zoe life, eternal life. And what that means to have eternal life. You know, most people think of eternal life, and this is certainly a part of it, of, you know, that we are going to be with Jesus in heaven forever. And that's true. That's true. But eternal life is for the here and now. We have Zoe life inside of us now because we have the nature, the same spirit that raised Christ from the think about this guys this ought to make you jump the same spirit the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that brought life back to his mortal body the same spirit that spirit that Jesus hung on that cross and gave up the ghost paid for sin and sickness once and for all went to hell stayed in the tomb for three days and then that same breath, Spirit of God, spoke, and life, I get the chills, life, Zoe life, came right back into the Master's body. And he rose up from death. That same Spirit lives in us. It dwells in us. Romans 8 says it. Let's look at it because this is... This is shouting material right here. The same spirit. Romans chapter 8. The same spirit. In the beginning of that chapter, we read. We read that there's no condemnation. In other words, there's no more death sentence. There's no more penalty for those who are in Christ. For the law of the spirit of life. Notice it's the spirit of life. Not the spirit of judgment. Not the spirit of, I'm going to get you if you do something wrong. The spirit of life has set you free in Christ from the law of sin and death. And then you look down at verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and we know he does, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who dwells in you. It is already in us. That life needs to be watered with the word of God and cultivated and tended to. And the more we water it with the word and the more we hear it, the more that life becomes evident. And, 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 and so much that it just grows and pushes every part of death out of us. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us. That's why to me, when I begin to meditate on this, it is impossible for me to stay sick. And I refuse, flat out refuse to stay sick. Flat out refuse it. I resist it hard like a rebel with a cause. Sickness cannot stay in me. Jesus already redeemed me from it. So Satan, take your bag of junk and your smoke screen and your symptoms and feelings and thoughts and get behind me. And guess what? When you speak like that, and I know it sounds hard, I'm not yelling, people who are watching online. I'm excited about this because there's this truth. There's no reason for the enemy to be pushing Christians around. And if he's doing it, it's because you're allowing him to. And that makes me even more mad to see believers allow that to happen. But they do because they don't know these truths. Now, these aren't new truths. These have been in 2,000 years ago. 
And they're just as pertinent and live and powerful today as when they were spoken by the Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost wrote these. That's living in you now. Your helper. Yes. Your partner. Yes. Yes. Your quickener. Your strengthener. Glory to God. So if the Spirit, the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, does the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. How do you know? Because you believe it. You know this. I know it. I know that that same Spirit of God lives in me. And because I know that, it makes me live differently. It makes me conscious of His presence in my life. And I don't want to displease him. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. Made me a new creature. And that same spirit also, it says, also in addition to saving you and giving you eternal life, also gives life to your mortal body. That's now. When we're there, we put on immortality. But for now, we're in mortal bodies. That, you know, the flesh is decaying, but our spirit is growing stronger and getting smarter and full of wisdom. And the life of God, oh, hallelujah, the life of God, the light of life, the eternal Zoe life of God lives in us. Lives in us. Look, look outside. Look what you see. All that you see came into being by words that were spoken. Out of nothing was manifest what we see. By words. That same spirit, that same breath of life lives in us. Friend, is it possible for sickness to rule and reign inside of you? Is it possible for sickness and the spirit of God to cohabitate no. it's impossible it's a, the enemy knows this the enemy knows this but when we yield to the thought when we yield to the symptom when we yield to the feeling yeah. we give place to the enemy that's why it is so important so important what we're looking at and what we're hearing because what we're looking at and hearing is going to be the determining factor of what you start saying. And if we want to if we want to walk in these things and realize that it's life and death, we need to give ourselves completely to the things of, the, of God. His word needs to be the only thing. I I I I even I remove myself because I find myself starting to get irritated. I remove myself from situations that people are talking death and unbelief. And, I'm not, and I, I, I know my audience. If they know nothing about scriptures and aren't even I'm not going to sit there and say, you guys don't even, they won't, it won't make sense to them. So rather than me get annoyed, I just excuse myself. Because I don't want that even getting in me anywhere. It's that important to me. Because it, uh, you know, I said this, we, we could sit in healing class and listen to the word for the first eight hours of the day, okay? And then go home at six or seven o'clock and put on the news and have it all just ripped right out of you, all the word that was sown in your heart. Do, do you understand that? We have got to seal up cracks, and, and we have to, and the Holy Ghost will show us, he'll show us where we need to fine-tune some things. Yes. He desires for us to walk in divine health and healing. And that is the will of God. That's the will of God. And, and it's, not, don't, it's not condemnation, guys. This is not condemning. If you feel like I'm battling something, that's, that's right, you are. You're fighting the good fight of faith. And I refuse to let anyone... Give up and quit. We're going to speak the word. Because if it's yours and it belongs to you, then you should be walking in it. And there's no ugly, miserable, loser devil that will keep you from it. It makes me mad that he would sit and try to rob. And you know what? He's persistent. But we could be more persistent. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You need to let him know, I'm in this until. 
You're going to tire out before I do. Because I'm staying with the word. And my, I, my mind is renewed every day. I, I, I mount up with wings as eagles. I run and I don't get weary. I walk and I do not faint. Hold fast in due season. Glory to God. Glory to God. Due season. The right time. The right time. This whole process that you're going through, don't even entertain the thought, well, why? Don't entertain the why thought. I'm telling you, don't entertain the why thought because the enemy will take that and get you going in all different directions. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Listen, the joy of the Lord is our strength. If we know nothing else and if we don't have enough strength to muster anything else, just make yourself start laughing. I, I, I'm serious. Make yourself start laughing because you're going to feel stupid. And then you're going to laugh at yourself because you think you sound ridiculous. And before you know it, you're going to have a real spirit-inspired laughter coming out of you. And you will forget all about the trial, the problem, the symptom. And I'll tell you what, the devil runs in terror when we do that. So merry heart does good like medicine. Exactly. So let's not, let's not uh, entertain the, the why. In due season, at the right time. Do not despise the process. Remember I said this. Every part of the process is something that is strengthening us and, and building us for something even greater. For something even greater. We know the promise. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. So we know for a fact that God will for me is to live a long, healthy, satisfied life here. So anything that's going to try to stop that, I stand and oppose it. I oppose it. And there's no power that can do that to us unless we grant it permission to do it. And that happens by us yielding to the feelings. And I'm not, listen, guys, I am not minimizing. I am. I'm minimizing sickness. I am. I'm not going to. I am minimizing sickness because God is bigger than sickness, any form. But I'm not, I'm not denying symptoms or facts or feelings. Those are real. Every one of those emotions are real. But I am deciding and determining to arm myself with even a greater fact than my symptoms that I could see and feel. And it's the Word of God that says, by His stripes... I was healed. He redeemed me. Yes, I was, and according to Deuteronomy, I was under the curse of the law. And so cancer was part of that curse. But according to Galatians 3.13, I am no longer under that curse because Jesus redeemed me from it. So therefore, it's impossible for me to be sick. On those facts, yes, the fact is we were cursed. We were cursed. We were bound in slaves to sin. But Jesus came, and this is why he came, so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. So because I've been redeemed from that sentence, I no longer impossible for me to sustain sickness in my body. I cannot. I have the Zoe life of God flowing through me. His very life, his very nature, his mind, his thoughts, his character living inside of me. And as I embrace that, and I make that the biggest thing in my life, it pushes darkness out. It pushes every kind of sickness and disease. It pushes lack out of the way. Glory to God. We're going to close with this. Man, I can't believe time slipped away. It always happens like that, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Yep. Nailed it. Yes, he did. 
He disarmed, disarmed them. the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them. Yes. On that. On That's them. right. And I, I'm sure Glory, Glory to God. To God. I, I was like, and I, I said to Glory. Jerry, disarm, do you, can you just see everybody? Like, to, completely handcuffed, oh, disarmed. disarmed. Can't do a thing. I, I saw that in, in a big picture. Yes. And it's still that way. And it's still, and it's still that and way. That. It's still that way. He's disarmed to people who know who they are in Christ. That's right. What scripture was that? Like? That's in Colossians, Colossians. chapter 2. Well, it starts at 14, 14, 14. Yeah. It was it really Yes, yes. Disarmed. disarmed. Can't do anything. Handcuffed, tied up, locked up, out of business. <laughs> Glory to God. That's eternal life. That when you meditate on those things, it'll make you laugh. It'll bring joy and strength to your physical body. Jesus said in John chapter 4, and we read this yesterday, and I just want to just quickly mention two other scriptures, and then we'll close for today and we'll pick up again tomorrow. But it says, But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him, John 4:14 4, will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. There's that word eternal life. That is zoe life, the God kind of life for us now. Now John chapter 5, one one chapter over in verse 24 says this. And we're talking about the life of God. You know, we sing that song, I have the life of God in me. I have his life, his power, his nature, and his ability. I have the life of God in me. Verse 24 says, truly, truly, verily, verily, I say to you. Whenever you hear that, that means pay attention. It's for real. Truly, honestly, I'm telling you emphatically. Whoever hears my words, this is Jesus speaking. Under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Whoever here, under the same inspiration of the same Holy Ghost that lives in us right now. Did you hear that? Amen. Not different. He didn't do it as the Son of God. He did it inspired by the same Holy Ghost that inspires us. Same. Emphatically, I'm saying to you. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Death to life. Zoe life. The life of God. We, I said it yesterday, we will never die. Does everybody understand? We don't ever have to fear death because it's not going to happen to us. <laughs> we will never die. We will never die. We close our eyes like you do every night, and you just wake up in a different place. It's like getting on a plane in Atlantic City or Newark, falling asleep on the plane, and when you wake up, you're in Fort Lauderdale. You're like, wow. And that's exactly how it will be for the believers. That's eternal life. That's eternal life. There's no sting. There's no pain. There's no, it's a translation from one place to the next. We will never die. Jesus died so that we never will. He tasted death. And with that, with that, he took care of sickness. He took care of cancer. He abolished cancer when he died. So that we will never have to die from cancer. Mm -hmm. Cancer has nothing on us. Amen. Can't even live and dwell in me. It, it's trying, but I'm resisting it. I'm refusing it. The life of God is driving it out of me. The Lord, the light, the Spirit, Christ. Has set you free from sin and death. Amen. Sin and death. Amen. Glory to God. If we just meditate on these things. Let's stand up on our feet. And we're going to get into more of this tomorrow. But he does not come into judgment. Whoever believes his word, who hears his word and believes them. Yes. Hearing and believing, we pass from 
judgment. We don't come into judgment and we pass from death, spiritual and physical death, unto life, eternal life. The life of God. Say it. The life of God is working in me. The life of God lives in me. The life of God quickens me. The life of God makes me healthy. It makes me smart. It makes me sharp. It makes me quick. It makes me good looking. It gives me power to be invincible to the works of darkness. Father, we thank you that the life of God is living in us. And it's we're giving it place to grow and to drive all manner of sickness and disease from us. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We have been set free from the law of sin and death. So sickness cannot stay in me. It's impossible for that to be. Because Jesus, His nature, His spirit lives in me. And with that comes Zoe life. So I, right now, call myself, say it, I call myself healed, healthy, strong, prosperous, peaceful, loving, joyful, very rich, full of wisdom. I decree that over myself because the nature and the spirit of God lives in me. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is life. It has quickened our, our bodies. Our spirits have grown stronger. And our mortal bodies have been quickened with your very life and nature. And we thank you that we are getting stronger and healthier. And we will fulfill your full plan and purpose and will for our lives. And declare your good works, Father. May you bring glory to yourself, Father. May people see you in us and want this spirit that they see in us. And it's available to them. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, for your grace, your love, and your mercy. May you be exalted forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Those who are watching online, apply the word. Apply the word and, uh, and continue sowing, continue being.